I'm sick of this crap. I want to be a dude. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. And before I did this job, I used to be a school teacher, right? And uh, are there any teachers in here? A whole bunch. What do you teach, honey? Uh, junior high. Junior high. What class? Uh, Who? <laughs> Food and nutrition. Do you say science too? Yeah. I taught PE. <laughs> Don't laugh. Everybody in here is PE teacher look just like me. Well, the woman ones did. <laughs> That's true if we're honest with each other and I feel like we are. <laughs> Come on, let's open up a little bit. You said science. Do you believe in science? Oh, yeah. It ain't real. <laughs> It's stupid. You don't believe it, really. We're all adults. We can be honest. Like, do you really believe in it? You think it's real? You love chemistry? That ain't real. They just make that stuff up. Every generation thought they had science figured out. Nobody did. You used to get a cold and they'd bleed you. Oh, he's the smartest guy in our village. What's... I always felt like I was falling behind in science class when I was a kid, and I figured out why. It's because science... Teachers, they speed through everything so you don't have the time to ask any questions and by the time they get done, they just give you a D and you're like, all right, I'm cool with that. I'll go to seventh grade and we can do it. That's the game. I remember when I was a kid, they never let me ask any questions. The teacher would be like, all right, boys and girls, everybody open up your books, page 52. All right, kids, look at the diagram. Check this out. A long, long time ago, all of us in here used to be monkeys, right? Then we turned into this Chewbacca Circus Carnival freak show looking thing. But now we're all people. Next chapter, move on. No questions. Well, guess what? I had questions. How come monkeys are the only animals that were ever allowed to turn into people? Yeah. How come there's no two-legged giraffe with a short neck walking around vaping? Because it ain't real. Not to mention the fact, we still got monkeys. <laughs> what, that guy used to be a friggin' duck? Stupid. The science teacher lady came up to me after a show one time, right? She comes up, she's like, she's like, she's like excuse me. That's how they talk, right? <laughs> huh? <laughs> She didn't do that. I just don't make her look stupid. <laughs> She's like, excuse me. Can I talk to her for a second? I was like, yeah, what's going on with you? She goes, let me tell you what I think. I think you just make fun of things you don't understand. I was like, <laughs> I can live with that. You're yeah, okay, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> She goes, we've always had monkeys just like we do now. And since not a long time ago, a group of those monkeys broke away from the other monkeys to become people. These monkeys stayed monkeys. These monkeys became people. <laughs> yeah, I'd have loved to have been at that campfire. You know what I mean? <laughs> this crap. I want to be a dude. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Science is stupid. I'm sorry, but I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't want to ruin what you spend your life doing, but... It's silly, man. You guys, I mean, just think about it. Like, you remember back in the 1960s when John F. Kennedy invented space or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, for like a couple thousand years, people playing connect the dots with the stars, and they're like, I see a Big Dipper, I see a kitty cat, I see a gladiator, whatever. John F. Kennedy's like, this is ridiculous. We have brilliant people in this world. They're called scientists, and I'm gonna get them all together in one room and figure out a way to go check that out. So that's what he did. He got the smartest scientists, this Von Braun dude from Germany and all these American scientists. He gets them together, forms NASA. He gets them in a big room or whatever. He's like, all right, check this out. You're the smartest scientists in the world. We need to figure out a way to go check out outer space. It's up to you to do it. Go get them. What do you need? And I guess they're like, well, the scientists are like, well, guys, I mean, first of all, we're gonna need a rocket ship. And I guess he's like, all right, cool, billion dollars. Pow, build a rocket ship. Here's why I didn't think everything through, because you remember what happened? They built a rocket ship, then I guess after the ship's done, they're like, all right, boys, 
We got the ship done. Now, one of y'all get in there. And those dudes are like, uh, I didn't in that thing. So I'm like, well, we built the ship. Now what are we supposed to do? And one of these scientists, brilliant, had to have said out loud, because somebody did, said, let's stick a monkey in there. And they're like, yay! A monkey. They picked a monkey. They chose a monkey. Not even steal some idiot off the side of the street and cram him in there. They picked a monkey. <laughs> Is this coming out in Chinese? You understand what I'm saying to you people? A monkey? Have you been to the zoo? Let's fire him in his face. He looks like he'll teach you something. The monkey's name was Coco or whatever, and they tricked him in there with Diet Pepsis and Skittles, or I don't know how they got him in there. But I guess before takeoff, PETA found out about it because that monkey had a helmet on his head. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. <laughs> we took a monkey with a helmet on his head and we fired him into outer space so he can come back and teach us about what he learned on his trip. <laughs> all right, first of all, why does a monkey need a helmet? If a monkey hits his head on something, he just becomes more monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back from outer space, monkey. Tell us what you learned. Ah, <laughs> oh, Frank, he must have hit his head on something. He won't even talk to me. <laughs> Second of all, every time I see an astronaut on TV, astronauts act like they're all full of themselves. If you're an astronaut, knock it off. You're doing a monkey's job. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you're second string to Coco. Then the Russian scientists are making fun of our scientists. Stupid Americans shoot the monkey to space. You know what they did? They fired a dog into outer space. <laughs> what does that even look like? The rocket ship's taking off. The window's open on the side. <laughs> Dog's head's hanging out. Stupid. Did I change your mind, honey? I just, the only p class I believe in is PE. Uh, PE's real. The rest of it, like, art, you shouldn't, that shouldn't even be in school. Like, art is supposed to be your own expression. You know what I mean? You can't get a grade for that. If your kid glues his macaroni on a paper plate and he eats the glue, that's his deal, man. That's how he does it. <laughs> they force on you the art they like and tell you that's what you're supposed to like. That ain't fair. Children, write this down. Picasso was a genius. You ever see a Picasso painting? <laughs> One eye's up here, the mouse in the wrong. My kids draw stuff, looks just like that. They also eat their boogers. What is he, a prodigy, this kid? <laughs> Children, look at this painting. It's the Mona Lisa. She's gorgeous. It looks like George Washington with a share wig on. <laughs> that chick ain't hot. <laughs> I don't believe it. The only class I don't make fun of is Spanish because I couldn't learn it. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. If you take Spanish in the South, you can't stop laughing because you can't. Just, you walk into class and the teacher looks at everybody and she's like, Hola, Senor Collier. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> Donde es la pluma? <laughs> I don't know if I'm in the right place. <laughs> what other classes? History? They change that every time it doesn't fit somebody's agenda. <laughs> I don't know what these kids are learning anymore. They do. When I was a kid, Christopher Columbus was a hero. We got a day out of school for that dude. He founded America. We were singing songs and dancing. Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. Now they're like, he was a jerk. He was lost. He's looking for the West Indies. His wife said, make a left. He made a right. He didn't even know where he was going. Stupid. <laughs> then he got lost. He crashed his ship or whatever in America. He got off the ship and he hacked up all the Indians. And it's like, goodness. <laughs> At least I got half off my mattress. <laughs> I 
I just don't believe in them. Math, math ain't real. Math is set up to make you feel stupid. Nobody knows the answer to that stuff. It's all sleight of hand. It is, I'm not kidding, think about it. Now they got common core, whatever that pineapple plus asterisk equals yogurt or whatever, that's stupid. <laughs> Math is set up to make you feel stupid. Nobody knows the answer to that. They crush your dreams too, when you can't figure out what they're doing. Reno, what's six times six? I was like, oh my gosh, I worked so hard on my multiplication tables, I know this. Six times six is 36. And they're like, do you feel good about yourself? I'm like, yes, I do. And they're like, well, figure this out for the next eight years. What's six A times six B, huh? <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know, because you put letters in there, that's not even the right class. <laughs> math is numbers, letters are the rest of them. You learned that when you're a little kid. I told my kids math wasn't real. My son's like, Dad, what's why? I'm like, I don't know. We were looking for when I was a kid, too. It ain't there. <laughs> what's X? One third of a dirty movie? I don't know what any of this stuff means. Either that or they tell you half a story, scare you to death. They never tell you what happened to the people in the story. I'd lay in bed all night worried about those people. They don't tell you what happened. They just leave you hanging. What happens if a train leaves California at four o'clock? Another train leaves New York at six o'clock? Where exactly are they when they smash into each other? It's like, oh man, uh, Texas, no Missouri. Ugh, I hope everybody got out all right. <laughs> That's why I taught PE. You get hit in the head with a ball, you're out. That's real life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I just came in here from Tennessee. I live in Tennessee. And uh, you ever been there? Yeah, yeah, real? I live in Murfreesboro. You know where that is? Are you kidding me? You know where it is? How do you know where it is? Drove past it. You drove past it, yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have, I ran out of gas. <laughs> I've been there 13 years, I still can't spell it. It's not, it's not like Murphy, like an Irish, it's like M-U-R-F-R-E-B-I-N-G, it's stupid. I try to order stuff off TV in the middle of the night. I'm like, hey, give me that vacuum cleaner hair cutter deal. They're like, where you live at? I'm like, Murfreesboro. They're like, can you spell it? I'm like, nope, click. <laughs> I'll brush my hair. <laughs> but when I first moved there, right, like I'd lived in Los Angeles before that and we had kids. And, uh, and I didn't want to raise my kids. Uh, and I would want them to learn English before they learn any Spanish. And then we moved to Nashville and they still don't learn English, but it don't matter. So, so when we moved there, I was trying to find something cool to do with my kids, right? And I'm talking to my next door neighbor and I'm like, hey man, what do people do around here for fun? And he's like, man, you ain't gonna believe this. 90 miles away from here, in a place called Chattanooga, Tennessee, is the greatest aquarium in the world. <laughs> like, I'm thinking where Tennessee is, I'm like, the greatest? He's like, I'm not kidding you, man. People come from all over the world to see this aquarium. You've gotta take your children. I'm like, kids, get in the truck. We're going to the greatest aquarium in the world. And they hopped in the truck, and we drove 90 miles to get there. And we get there, and it's like $80 a person to get in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> And there's four of us, so <laughs> figure that out on your own. <laughs> now this aquarium sits on a river at downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're all excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, kids, here we go. We're walking down this dark tunnel. You can't see anything. I'm like, oh, good. And my kids are like, Dad, it's the greatest aquarium in the world. I'm like, I know, kids, I'm giving you this gift. And we walk up and it opens up and you see nothing but light and glass. And it's like, ah! And the first exhibit, Catfish. <laughs> I drove 90 miles, paid $85 a person for cat. You can't put glass around stuff you already own and write aquarium on the outside of it. <laughs> That's like, you wanna go to the zoo? Yeah, if they have a dog and a squirrel. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I get angry at stupid stuff. I had to quit drinking. Uh, I used to drink, uh, and, and now I don't. Uh, and and I, I used to drink a lot, and then I can't. And I'm glad, kind of, but I used to just, I'd spend like a drrrr, and then I could have a beer, and I'd be like, ah. And now I go, drrrr, and there's nothing. It's like, drrrr, ah! 
ah, and I fire into no man's land. On top of it, I got that ADHG TV, whatever that stupid thing is. I can't focus on nothing. <laughs> like, uh, my kids probably, uh, you know. I just, ugh! I used to be this happy-go-lucky, beer-drinking, fluffy kid, and now I'm like, get out of my grass! Like, it just happened overnight, and I can't dig. I can't watch the news. Everybody just, ugh. They're like, 16-year-olds should vote. Did anybody see this? That's what they said, 16. How are you gonna vote when you can still be grounded? <laughs> Who are you voting for, boy? Bernie Sanders. Not today, you're not. Get in your room. Break. The world's flipping upside down. And I got my whole family living in my neighborhood now. That When I moved to Murfreesboro, my whole family decided it'd be a good idea for them to move there too. And when you're young, you need to be with your parents. But when you're 48, you don't. Not the same street. And my dad is just one of these real angry... I'm like, I'm angry. <laughs> but I'm not medicated. He... He's so mad all the time. Like, he's just, ugh, like his hair is real short, like he's mad at it, like, you know? And his belt's too tight, and the grass is like that high, just. <laughs> and on top of being angry, he's one of these people that blows everything out of proportion. You got people like that in your family? Like the little smallest thing happens and they turn it into a tornado. I mean, it's just a nightmare. I know when he comes in my house, he's got, you know, and not only does he blow stuff out of proportion, but he's, <laughs> all right, so he, <laughs> he wears a neck brace, right? But it's not one of the hard ones. It's one of those soft, cushiony, I think he just wears it so he can hold his head up and sleep while he's standing, but you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> He wears it because like three years ago, some poor girl rear-ended him driving two, and he says it ruined his church softball career, so he's got to let everybody know. <laughs> so I know whenever he comes in the house, <laughs> there's trouble, and there's probably nothing, but he just did this. Just... So everybody's sitting around calm in the house. He comes in the house. He's got his thing on his head, his neck, and, and everybody's calm. We're playing board games. Like everybody's calm, and a door opens up. He comes in. He's like, oh, man alive. Y'all better come upstairs. I got to tell you something. You ain't going to believe this. Oh, man, here we go. <laughs> what, Daddy? He's like, sit down. You are not going to believe what happened. Whew. <laughs> I done gone out and caught the diabetes. <laughs> Do what, man? I done gone out and caught the diabetes. <laughs> like, how you know you caught the diabetes? He's like, Cause my feet's numb. <laughs> my daddy had numb feet, he caught the diabetes. His daddy had numb feet, he caught the diabetes. Now my feet's numb and I done gone and caught the diabetes. <laughs> so last year he decides he's taking our whole family on a family vacation, which means everybody gets in my truck and we drive from Murfreesboro to Washington, D.C., right? Have anybody here ever been to Washington, D.C.? <laughs> Bunch of people. Okay, did you ride the metro when you were there? If you've never been there before, they have this metro train system, right? It goes into DC and Virginia and Maryland. You can go around and see the sights. And we were gonna go to the Air and Space Museum, and my, my dad was all irritated because he thought it was a museum about a woman named Air and Space. Anyway, it don't matter. <laughs> so we're on a train, whole family. We get to our stop, right? And when we get to the stop for the Air and Space Museum, the doors of the train open up, whole family gets off the train, except my dad. My dad won't get off the train. And we're looking at him through the open door and he's sitting inside the train looking at us like, I ain't getting off here. I don't care about that woman or a museum. I'm like, dad, come on, man, we gotta go. He's like, I ain't getting off, this ain't my stop. And at the last second, my stepmom's like, Andy, get off the train. At the last second, my dad goes to get off the train. As he goes to get off, he jumps through the open doors. As he jumps through the open doors, the doors of the train close and catch one of his feet inside the train. So his body's on the outside, his foot's on the inside, he's just yelling, my foot's stuck, my foot's stuck. 
And this lady inside the train is trying to help him and set him free, right? She's pulling on his shoe to set him free. He's like, she's stealing my shoes! She's stealing my shoes! <laughs> At the last second, the woman jerks his shoe off. He pops his foot through. The doors of the train close. The train takes off. And my dad's standing on the platform with one shoe and a dirty sock like, good Lord, do you see what they did? They'll steal anything from me anymore. Do you see that woman? <laughs> I was like, man, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm okay. Shoot, actually, I'm better. Now only one of my feet's caught the diabetes. <laughs> you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much.